today the talk is about podcasting 101, but one common thread that podcasters have is getting over that initial hurdle to find their voice and listen to their voice. So I'm Caitlin Cass Stevens, like she said. Um, aside from being a podcaster and an inbound marketing specialist, I'm a community builder for Carolina Women in Tech. I'm one of the co-founders. And I'm an avid gardener and dog mom. So um, if you have any questions about any of those topics, I'm all ears. So raise your hand if you are a podcaster. Awesome. And raise your hand if you manage or produce a podcast. Okay. Awesome. So in the words of my good friend Sarah Colon Harris, wake the flock up and fly the coop so you can go after your dreams. Uh, Sarah is um, a former news reporter, and she founded She Flew the Coop, which is a community organization for women and girls, uh, really to help them find their purpose um, and get through those roadblocks along the way. I met Sarah uh, actually through my mom, who works in the news industry. Um, and then I also met her at some entrepreneurial networking events as she was flying the coop and leaving her full-time job to start her business stories to inspire. She Flew the Coop came out of this idea of a documentary uh, to help people leave their full-time jobs and go after their dreams. Um, and after a lot of trials and tribulations, uh, she tried to get enough funding for the documentary and wasn't able to meet her goal. So she had to take a step back. She had to build up her community to find the support, master her curriculum, um, and get the necessary resources to see that dream come true. Uh, fast forward from 2013 to 2019, uh, Sarah started working through uh, this process and seeing a lot of patterns of women who were trying to leave their full-time jobs and start their own business. And she acknowledged this 12-step process of flying the coop. Um, she came to my, my co-host, Paula and Sharon, and said, I need another way to be able to share this with more people. I think we need to do something using audio or video, or we, we gotta do something. And so we invited her on our podcast as a guest um, and talked about her story. And ultimately, we ended up creating a podcast series around the inside scoop to flying the coop. So um, when we were going into this, it was the middle of 2019. We were in the thick of conferences. We were just sort of running ourselves ragged. Uh, we weren't really taking the time to uh, prioritize ourselves in a way. And so uh, it, it was kind of a, a common theme. Um, we, we set out to start recording this podcast series. We made a plan. We had a schedule. We knew what we were going to talk about. And then one of my co-host's uh, husbands passed away suddenly. Um, and so we had to take a step back. We had to take a pause. Fast forward, uh, you know, several months later, uh, we go into the podcast studio and we record the first episode. We get back to the production and we start editing. And uh, and by the way, we were recording in a studio in person at a co-working space. Um, we, we get back together and uh, we're touching base and Paula says, we never actually hit record. <laughs> the, episode, <laughs> the episode did not record. Um, and so at that point we were just like, oh, we just keep hitting these roadblocks. Like, should we really keep doing this? Um, and we decided that the, the vision and the opportunity and the information was so valuable that we had to, we had to persist. Um, and so as you think about podcasting, what, what has gotten in the way from, for you, Alyssa? A lot of work. You have to be consistent. There's a lot of details that go into it. And it's definitely hard to do alone. So as we were as we were launching this um, as we were launching this series, 
we all had different mindsets about it, and we had to get on the same page. Um, and once we were able to align with our vision and reset, uh, we were able to move forward. So we, we listened to our, our intuition. We acknowledged the, the stirring in us that there was something greater for this curriculum. There was something more for this opportunity. And that's really what it is about podcasting, is listening to your intuition. Think about what you're passionate about. Help people understand the opportunities available to them. Um, but acknowledge that stirring, that unrest. And a lot of times when you're in this this uh, place of fear and uncertainty, um, you have a hard time finding your peace. And so when you're in those moments of stirring, acknowledge it, call it out, name it something, um, but ultimately listen to that intuition. And then be present in the moment. We recorded four episodes and then the pandemic happened and we were like, halt, <laughs> can't meet in person anymore, we gotta pivot. Um, and we took a few months off. Um, actually, we took like seven months off. Um, and my mother-in-law passed away during that time uh, from stage four lung cancer. Um, my other co-host, her father passed away during that time. And so uh, we had to, to acknowledge that uh, we needed to just kind of be still and know. Um, and when you're building a podcast, you don't always have to go, go, go. A lot of people will start off their podcast. This is a rookie mistake. They will start off their podcast with, uh, you know, episode one, episode two, episode three, episode four, but there's never really an ending. You just kind of keep recording and publishing and promoting and recording and publishing and promoting. And you see people burn out. You see after about three months, they're like, oh, this is a lot of work. But ultimately, seasons are, are what one of our, our, in series, were one of our biggest learnings um, in, in the two years of recording episode after episode after episode. I'm talking 80 plus episodes, guys, over the course of, of several years. Um, and, and we had to stop and pause, and, and then this series presented itself. Um, and so had we not allowed ourselves to kind of reset and be still and be present, um, we would have either burnt out or we would have been publishing a product that wasn't really authentic to where we were at at that time. The next step in finding your voice um, is experimentation, exploring your options. Um, when it comes to podcasting, you're gonna have to test out different formats. It might be a solo episode. It might be a multi-host episode. It might be uh, where you're interviewing guests, but it's hard to really know what's gonna work best for you until you're allowing yourself to explore those options. Some people get so set in their ways and, and they're like, well, I've always done a solo podcast and that's just how it is. Um, but if, if you watch some of the greatest podcasters of all time, uh, they've allowed themselves to pivot and experiment and go to conferences and have great conversations and incorporate that into the stories that they're telling through their podcast. Being intentional, making a plan and achieving the plan, setting those objectives and key results, um, identifying those SMART goals, uh, that specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely um, goal, whether that's for an episode, whether that's for a season, whether that's a business goal or a podcast goal, uh, but making that plan and seeing it through and being intentional about it. Also think about this in any, any daily activity of, of being intentional with your time, being intentional with the people that you're spending your time with, um, being intentional about the topics that you cover and the talent that you bring on your podcast, the music you use, the equipment you pick out. Um, it doesn't have to be expensive, but it definitely needs to work for the environment. Take that leap. So when I was going back and listening to these podcast episodes in preparation for this presentation, um, it was interesting because at the time this episode was recorded, we were in the thick of the pandemic. I think it was like November, December 2020, and we were all just flat out tired. We had a hard time uh, keeping our recording times. We had things come up. We had, you know, family issues. We had, um, uh, you know, 
two moms who were doing school from home. I mean, it was a it was a wild time, and it was hard to deal with the fluctuation and the unknown. Um, and so, actually, during this episode, uh, we talked about sometimes taking the leap is actually taking a step back and taking some time to to re reevaluate what's working and what's not working so that you can set that plan into motion. Next is making sacrifices. Um, and so I think about this as like, uh, like the Marie Kondo method of like, what, what's bringing you joy? And if it's not, like, get rid of it. Um, and allowing yourself to kind of clear the air, cleanse what's not working. And with podcasting, sometimes uh, less is more. And allowing yourself to make those edits and, and cut things out and get, get to the point. Um, making sure that you're telling a clear story um, and there's a clear character and problem uh, and outcome. Being okay with making sacrifices, uh, allowing yourself to say no to things, um, and, and knowing that you know, uh, you're, building, you're building something bigger and greater than yourself, and so you're making room for something better when you cleanse. The next step in flying the coop uh, is building courage and strengthening that resilience. And uh, even though you're fearful, doing it anyway. Uh, sometimes the hardest things in life and the things that you're most scared of are the things that you need to do most. Mm -hmm. Friend of that uh, mentioned that to me the other day. I thought that was inspiring. So building that courage, allowing yourself to fail forward, learning fr from those mistakes, honoring the mess ups and what you could have done differently, but not letting yourself sit in it. Uh, allowing yourself to acknowledge it and move forward. Allowing yourself to, to you know, honor the, the past person that you were and you did the best that you could with the information that you had, but you're, you're leveling up um, because you are resilient. The next step is openness to serendipity. Um, and this is one of my favorite episodes, actually. Um, I wasn't on this one. As we were adjusting to different format types, um, we were having a hard time getting everybody on the same schedule. With four people trying to record a podcast series, it can be challenging. Um, and we were doing these uh, recordings through Zoom. Um, due to the pandemic, we weren't going in studio. So uh, this is Sarah and Sharon talking about how to allow yourself to embrace joy, even in the smallest things, whether that was um, taking a day to go to the lake or spending some time in your garden or having a movie night with your kids or uh, taking a walk and not having an agenda, just kind of letting yourself be and enjoying those little things. Um, for me, embracing joy is is when you plant all of the, the seeds and the bulbs in your garden, and then you start to see them pop up uh, in the new season. Um, and I think about that with podcasting because uh, you, you are planting a lot of seeds with people. You're letting people know about it. You're letting people know about uh, the opportunity and the conversation and the possibility of being a guest or a partner. Um, but being open to those spontaneous moments at a conference when you just meet somebody and things click. Um, so thinking about, you know, serendipity and joy. Finding freedom. Um, when I was listening back to these episodes, uh, the, the line that stuck with me the most was uh, find em, finding freedom is setting boundaries. Uh, and being authentic with what your needs are first. And it's interesting during this whole pandemic, um, you know, we were, we were closed down, we weren't going to events, we weren't meeting with people in person, we were staying at home, we were in our social bubble. Um, and then as we started to emerge, we were trying to figure out, you know, how comfortable we were about what our own boundaries were, and they changed. And so, uh, you know, in this, in this podcast episode that Sarah and I recorded together, um, you know, boundaries for me was time blocking. Um, it's time for myself. It was only having so many meetings a day before I was just overstimulated and burnt out. 
Um, and it was it was allowing myself to say, you know, I can't bring my best self forward, and so I'm going to need to reschedule this, and being okay with that, um, and not being afraid of what other people are going to think of me, uh, and and knowing in my heart what was best for myself. And I think with all of the 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 women that we recorded with, uh, us all being on the same page of allowing each other to put themselves first and voice voice those needs. So not only being authentic on your podcast, but being authentic with the team you're surrounding yourself and bringing that to life. Keep the faith, trust the journey. Um, it's definitely uh, a ride. A lot of times we're so fixed on the destination, we have a hard time um, not planning everything and then things not going according to plan. So, um, you know, as we were working through this podcast series, I thought about uh, kind of the first episode didn't record. It wasn't meant to be. It was a practice round. Let's try it again. Um, and once we couldn't record in person, we met online and we touched base and we did what we could. Um, and ultimately, it, it, it came out to be a really amazing experience, learned a lot. And you can kind of hear the story of our own personal evolutions along the way. Embracing transformation, adapting to change. I think that's one of the hardest things to do because of this messy middle. Um, when you're going through a big transformation in your life, and I think even globally right now, we're going through this major time of rebuilding. Um, and so uh, allowing yourself to sit in that messy middle and acknowledge that things aren't going to be the way that you think that <laughs> they should be. Uh, and things come up and you can't control other people and you can't control, you know, certain things in the world. You can only control what you do. Um, and so having that flux mindset, adapting to change and embracing transformation is what is going to ultimately help you, um, you know, move through those fears and find your voice. Discovering your truth, walking into your purpose. Um, this is the last episode of this amazing, wonderful experience of a podcast series. Um, as we went through two years of recording, uh, 12 episodes, we realized that uh, it's, it's never what it, it seems, but if you can just stick with it and enjoy the ride uh, and be resilient even through the resistance, um, you'll be able to, to really uh, go, go deep within. Like that's your roadmap, that's your compass. So I guess the question, the burning question of, of moving through your fears and finding your voice is asking yourself, who are you called to be in this world? Is podcasting in your future? Couple opportunities and resources I wanna point out. Uh, Clarion Creative Agency has a webinar coming up. So if you're wanting to learn more about tactics for podcasting, we've got a discussion guide template that we're going to be sharing and uh, ultimately talking about how to launch and leverage your B2B podcast in 2022. So if you want to get into the nitty gritty, if you're already a podcaster or, uh, or you're ready to get started, that's going to be a really helpful resource. Uh, we also have a marketing mentorship program. So if you're looking for some mentorship, if you're exploring a career change, or if you're exploring the marketing field, definitely check out clearingcreative.com. You can go to our resources. And we are taking applications through October 7th. So with that, if you try to be everything to everyone, you'll end up reaching no one. And ultimately, you'll have a hard time finding yourself. So thank you. I'm happy to take questions if you guys have questions about podcasting. I, I, it literally can be anything. It could be about techie stuff. It can be about coordinating. Where can you record locally? Uh, like in town locally or like on, on your computer locally? <laughs> Yeah, so we've podcasted um, at Hookah Co-working Space as well as Advent Co-working Space. Um, there are more and more venues and even a uh, agencies, businesses that are starting to outfit podcast studios in their um, in their buildings. Um, I think Stratagon is an agency locally that um, has a podcast studio uh, in their building. Um, but also, I mean, 
at some points we recorded at each other's houses. Uh, I remember at one point we were testing out lapel mics so that we could take it to conferences and, and record with people. And so we ended up in Sharon's closet um, <laughs> because we were like, all right, you know, not a lot of echoing. The sounds good. The clothes kind of are a barrier. Um, and we ended up like passing. We had two lapel mics with a splitter and we were like kind of passing the mic around. It's pretty funny. It was a great episode. Um, so yeah, I, I would say um, uh, recording locally could be in a studio, but it could also just be at your house. Any other questions about podcasting? Uh, one of uh, the tools I'm exploring right now for an enterprise podcast gateway to e-commerce um, is Riverside. So you can uh, record locally on your computer um, and also in the cloud. Uh, it also allows for a video and quality audio recording, which um, Zoom struggles with a little bit. Uh, and you can also live stream. So Riverside FM is something I'm exploring. Um, as far as hosting Anchor, I use Anchor and Libsyn um, for all my clients' podcasts as well as my own, depending on uh, what you're into. Um, and you can find Lady Tech Charmers on Spotify, Google Play, um, Apple Podcasts, wherever you wherever you listen to podcasts. So, open book. Happy to answer any questions you guys have. You can also find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all the things. So, thanks. <laughs>